All right, so what the heck is going on in this picture? All right, so this is actually an image from the Gulf of Mexico when one of those toxic algae place. And when those toxic algae blooms take place, we call them a dead zone because the algae dies, bacteria then eats that algae. It makes the water hypoxic. We learned that term, it means low oxygen. When something is low oxygen, living things that require oxygen, like this fish, they die, they're suffocated. So let's just do a quick background on those dead zones. I'm gonna take you up to this image of the Gulf of Mexico. You can see all of that green is a huge, huge bloom of toxic algae. And the thing that caused that is upriver, up here in the Mississippi River, which we can't see on the screen, there's a bunch of farms all along the river. And every time it rains, the fertilizer gets dragged into the river, which then is carried out to the Gulf of Mexico. And fertilizer makes plants grow, including algae. So the algae bloomed and bloomed and bloomed. However, in a situation like this, it throws off the natural balance of things. Some big ideas in terms of the balance associated with photosynthesis and cellular respiration. All organisms, big idea number one, are dependent on a healthy carbon dioxide and oxygen balance. Photosynthesis and cellular respiration are the two processes that really maintain this balance. This is not a balanced system. This is not a balanced system. So plants through the process of photosynthesis use energy um, absorbed from sun, water, and CO2 to produce that sugar, glucose, and oxygen. We then know that animals and plants through cellular respiration use that oxygen and the sugars to produce CO2, waste product, we exhale that, water, we exhale, and finally, we get energy in the form of ATP, which we need to maintain life. So you're going to be exploring this concept through your first virtual lab. So let's go to the Google Classroom and see how we're gonna do this thing. So when you go to the Google Classroom, you're ultimately gonna have an attachment that will open up a document that looks like this. The very first thing I want you to do is read that background information. When you're done reading the background information, boom, go straight to this link here, where you should ultimately be um, taken to a page that looks like this. You click on Virtual Labs, it's going to ask which one are we going to do? You're going to click on carbon transfer through snails and elodia, where you're going to be answering this question. How does carbon dioxide cycle through a biological system? So once you're at that page, open up. It's going to start to read for you. Let it read to you when you open it up. A few things just to kind of get it out there. You cannot exit out of this and then return and it saved your work. One go, you need to complete the lab. Uh, the other component, you're not going to be using the lab notebook. Instead, fill out all of your information in my lab document. The first real thing that you need to be doing is answering the problem that the lab is presenting. Um, so create your own question for what we're investigating in this experiment. Then step two, you're gonna literally explore the lab space. So let's go back to the lab. Once I click out of this, I can go through each of the items in the lab, right? I can click on it and get some background information about what's going on with each of these items. Um, I can also get the procedure. Um, I can, there's so many items that I can jump through here so that I can get the information that I need. But the biggest thing I want you to remember is you're going to be working in the lab notebook, okay? You're going to be working in my document that I've created for you. So if you follow through every step here, as you go through the lab, I've created sentence starters for you. I've helped you create your hypothesis. I've explained to you what the variables are in the lab. And then here is where you'll fill out your data tables. Once you're done, because you've saved a copy of this into your own Google Drive, then you're gonna share it with me back on Google Classroom, or I will create an assignment that says, turn in your lab. So please email me if you have questions. Good luck.